Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to lecture 5 of our human resource management course. In this lecture, we are going to explore the world of training and development, its significance, its principles and many other things. So by the end of this lecture, you will be able to understand what training and development is what is the importance of training and development? What are the various principles of training and development? What are the methods that can be employed to enable training in an organization? The various strategies for effective training and development? The ways by means of which we can evaluate the training and development mechanisms in the organization. So these are the broad domains that we are going to touch upon today and I am sure by the end of it you would be able to understand the approaches that can be used for understanding the training and development. So let us begin with the introduction to training and development. What is training? So, when you talk about the definition of training, so training is a systematic and organized way of acquiring knowledge, skills and competencies often aimed at improving an individual's or a group's performance, capabilities and effectiveness in a specific field, profession or tasks. So, training is about increasing the knowledge, skills, abilities of an individual with respect to a certain job position in an organization. It typically involves a planned curriculum. There are several instructional methods employed for ensuring and enabling training in the organization. And this is all done to enhance the capa capabilities of the individual and the organization for achieving the desired goals and objectives. Now, it represents a very structured and a very systematic approach to enhance the skills, knowledge and competencies. So, the endeavor is to enhance the knowledge skills and competencies of individuals in the organization. So, how do we do it? What all things do we cover? Why is it important to impart training to the individual? Is something which is again very, very important. So, training typically focuses on improving and improving and individuals capabilities in their current role. So, you may say that this training is basically job oriented in nature. You must have heard about the term training and development. Many times these two words are used together. Training is an act of increasing knowledge and skills of an individual with respect to a certain job position that he performs. And many times people get confused between what training and development really means and they start using them interchangeably. But let me make it very clear to you that both the things are a little different. In the subsequent slides, we are going to talk about some important points of differences between these two. But at the outset, I would like to tell you the training is about increasing the current capabilities of the individuals 
with respect to the specific job positions that he is holding whereas development is something that is career oriented in nature. So, it is not just focusing on improving the capabilities of an individual with respect to the specific job positions rather they are more focused on the holistic approach the holistic development of an employee. So, together training and development empowers the employees to perform better and more effectively. So, basically it includes acquisition of specific job related skills, it may include acquiring the technical knowledge we may be interested in developing the cognitive skills of the individuals by means of training, we may be interested in uh, enhancing the problem solving skills of the employees or maybe we may think of improving the individuals on various domains. So, these may be the various uh, reasons why we may be interested in providing the training to the people. So, the next question which arises is why is it important for the organizations? It is important for the organization for the simple reason that organization is able to hone its capabilities if it hones the capability of the individuals working in it. So, for different levels in the organization be it the top level management positions or middle level management positions or the bottom level management positions, it is the training that can help. The needs of different levels might vary and depending upon the needs at different levels to hone the skills, the training may be imparted. For example, there is a dire need to improve the technical skills of the individuals at the bottom level. Whereas, maybe for the middle level managers the idea is idea may be to enhance their interpersonal skills. For the people who are holding that CXO positions or the top man management positions in the organization, our endeavor may be to provide them some trainings related to cognitive skills. So, definitely depending upon the various domains of the individuals that they are working in and the level they possess in the organization and the kind of skills they require. We decide on the kind of training that needs to be given to the individuals. So, training and development programs definitely empower the employees to perform their jobs more effectively in a more efficient fashion and they are able to better change and adapt to the changing work environment and the changing business landscapes contributing towards the organizational success at large. Now, various initiatives might, might be taken by the organization to train their employees to hone the capability of the employees as well. So, now the question which arises is <coughs> or the thing which comes into play is employee growth and organizational growth. These two things are intricately linked there is an intricate connection between those, these two things, these are two linked with each other. So, as the employees develop their skills, it you know through training and development, they become more valuable assets for the organization. The employee starts growing as you know when individual starts growing they contribute positively towards the organization success and they contribute in multiple ways towards the organizational goals. For example, it helps in increasing the productivity of the employees, the input output ratio of the individuals in the organization increases if they are skilled and motivated. If they are skilled and motivated to be more productive, they lead to 
greater output and efficiency at work, which contribute towards the overall organizational success and growth. Then if we train the employees well and they are equipped with the latest technologies and skills and the kind of knowledge set, skill set, competence level required in the organization, we can foster a culture of innovation also. And it is very well seen that at the helm of the entire thing, at the helm of any successful organization lies innovation. Employees who are well trained and encouraged to develop their problem solving and critical thinking abilities, they are able to better contribute towards more innovative ideas and more innovative ideas is something that enhances the organizational success and that contributes towards the organizational growth and success. They will be fast, they will be you know adapting to the change in a better fashion. Moreover, customer satisfaction is one of the things that can be achieved by means of training. So basically it is seen that if the internal customers are very well trained, it will eventually lead to enhanced customer satisfaction. By internal customers, we mean the customers who are internal to the organization. We refer to the internal customers as the employees of the organization. So if these employees are very well trained, for example, there is an organization which is into customer service business and we assume that the people are very well trained in the customer services that are required uh, for assuming their responsibilities and they are good at some kind of negotiation skills also, they are trained on those lines, then certainly it can be reflected in terms of the external customer satisfaction that they give to the employees, sorry to the uh, customers. So it is important for us to focus on these areas. Better customer experiences can be fetched by means of it. The individuals are able to better perform and therefore the customer retention is also in a way guaranteed and also business growth happens. Training in the best practices and process improvements can often lead to greater operational efficiencies at work. It leads to greater efficiencies at work. They contribute to organization growth through increased productivity. So it is important for us to bear in mind these things when we talk about the importance of organization training. As employees acquire new skills, they are better equipped with certain technologies, they are able to improve the efficiencies at work, you know, the organization becomes more capable to expand into new markets, to develop new products, to foster a culture full of innovation, to foster a culture full of creativity in the organizations and therefore trained employees can be highly instrumental for the success of the organization at large. So in nutshell we may say that employee growth is a catalyst for the organizational growth. So organizations which prioritize the training and development invest in their most valuable assets, the people and reap the rewards of improved performance, improved productivity, lower turnover, employee turnovers and ultimately leading to a sustainable and successful growth. So it is again very, very important for us to bear in mind that these things are highly instrumental for the organizational growth. Now we will talk about the significance of training. Uh, we have already talked about it in fact 
it is said that if we have the right kind of training in place, the job performance improves. The employee motivation and satisfaction is actually the consequence of the improved training programs that we have for people. If people feel, in fact, this is the innate need of many of the people today. If you talk about the present workforce, they really want some kind of personal growth also. And personal growth actually comes when they know that they are trained and they are according to, uh, they, are, uh, they are very well equipped according to the requirements. Richard Bramson once said, train your employees so well that they are ready to leave. Train your employees so well that they are ready to leave, but at the same time, treat them they, but at the same time, treat them so well they don't, don't feel like. So basically, it's about providing the right kind of career opportunities, training and development opportunities to your employees, so that they are, you know, career ready. But at the same time, HR has to assume the responsibility of treating their employees really well. They have to guarantee some kind of satisfaction at work, motivation at work and some kind of conducive environment wherein the group cohesiveness exists. Then definitely trained employees will be more competitive in nature. It will enhance the culture of competitiveness in the organization as well as the culture of collaboration in the organization. So, it can be very well made out that you know enhanced satisfaction, enhanced competitiveness, enhanced collaboration can happen with the right kind of training imparted to the people. Moreover, it significantly contributes towards the employee retention also. So, I hope the entire framework of this thing is very clear to you all and by now you have a fair understanding of why training is significant. Now, let us proceed towards the other aspect of it that is the various steps involved in training. So, when we talk about the various steps involved in training, training has to start with understanding the needs. And when we talk about need assessment, it starts with identification of the training needs. We need to identify the training needs and we need to analyze the training needs also. Now, how does it happen? How do we try, try to determine the gap between the current skills and knowledge of the employees and the skill required to meet the organizational goal? So, basically in context of identification of training needs, we need to do some kind of analysis. First of all, we need to understand the essence of organizational analysis. And this analysis may happen at different levels. For example, we may conduct some kind of analysis at organization level in order to understand the current business environment, which includes the political environment, economic environment, social environment, technological environment, legal environment, so on and so forth. Besides that, the individual analysis needs to be done and also the job related analysis needs to be done. So, after conducting thorough analysis of the various requirements of the uh, organization, we need to organization, jobs, departments and individuals working in the organization, we need to identify the gap which exists and we need to work on those gaps. So, basically uh, this need assessment would actually help us in bridging the gap, it will certainly help us in understanding what the organizations are actually looking for. I mean, uh, what are the various areas or discrepancies 
that they want their employees to be trained on. And definitely we have to align the training needs with the overall objectives of the organization. Next is about learning objectives. So after we have analyzed what the needs are, it is important for us to see the learning objectives. It is important for us to come to the various objectives. You know, depending upon the needs of various organizations, the individuals, the departments, etc., we come to the various objectives, that is the training objectives. So here, what needs to be defined is the SMART objectives. So when you talk about the SMART objectives, it would mean the specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time bound objectives that addresses the training needs. Now linking these objectives to the organizational goals, linking these objectives to the organizational goals is yet another concern. And after we are through with this, after we have clearly defined what the training objectives are, the next step would be to design the training program. Now when we talk about designing the training program, we have to think about selecting the right kinds of training methods. In a while I will be telling about the various training methods that can be employed for making the training happen and for providing the right kind of developmental opportunities for the people. So here in course of designing the training program, we need to understand what are the various training methods that need to be considered for providing the training and then we have to move towards working on developing the training material. So, here we have to understand what kind of training programs are to be made for the individuals and in course of designing the training program, we will think about the methods that can be employed for training program. It is about understanding whether to impart the training to the people uh, on the job or off the job, whether to impart the training through workshops or to provide them with some other kind of mechanisms for uh, the training or uh, you know, depending upon the nature of training it is, we have to decide on the kind of methods that are supposed to be taken care of and after that we move to understanding and developing the training material. Based on the method and the need of the training, we have to decide on creating the material which, which is alignment with the objectives of training, which is in alignment with the uh, overall objectives of the organization also. So, it may include making some kind of presentations as such, maybe we may think on the lines of uh, coming up with some kind of activities through which we may want to make people learn something or maybe we can come up with some kind of manuals, we may come up with some kind of you know interactive content also. So we may have different mechanisms, we may have various methods of you know designing the training program for our employees. So, after we have designed the training, it is important to implement the training well. Now implementing the training well would mean scheduling and logistics, understanding the scheduling and logistics, that is what would the duration of the program, what would the time involved in it, how many people will be attending the training programs, how will we conduct the training sessions whether it is supposed to be a spaced training or a masked training, whether it is supposed to be you know a kind of training in which uh, people will be actively involved or it will be a kind of training in which uh, people will have to be more involved in some kind of activities, so on and so forth. So we have to decide on all those things and definitely then comes your delivery of training. So delivery of training is yet another thing that we have to look at. So how will the training be delivered, who would deliver the training, uh, how to ensure that the trainers are well prepared and they are engaging, they are capable of you know delivering the right kind of content effectively etc. So all these things will have to be taken care of when we have implement, when we are implementing the training program, who is going to be the trainer, uh, what kind of training uh, material would be provided to the individuals, 
will there be some kind of um, you know mechanism for uh, delivering the content effectively or uh, how to enhance the experience for the trainees etc so all these things will have to be taken care of when it comes to step steps involved in training after we are through with this the next step is evaluation and assessment so when we talk about evaluation and assessment here comes the role of evaluating the training right so after we have implemented the training program to the people it's important to see that whether the program that was implemented to the people was effective enough or not whether it was you know, you know whether it was effective enough or not whether it uh, contributed to the objectives of the training so we have to see that whether the learning objectives were properly met using the training methods chosen or the way in which it was actually given to the people so all these things have to be taken care of in a very effective manner we may go for formative assessments wherein the assessment wherein we assess the effectiveness of training during the process to identify the area of improvement at times we may even go for summative assessments so wherein we check the uh, entire uh, set of skills learned by the people towards the end so these either of the methods can be followed a blend of two can be followed at times we may uh, make use of some kind of formative assessment so that people are active during the training and uh, we are able to see that whether people are contributing fully uh, towards it or not so all these things are supposed to be seen and after we are through with the entire set of uh, things after we have evaluated the people well it's important to provide them with the feedback because nothing would be nothing would be complete without providing them with the appropriate feedback so feedback is an important aspect so that they are able to make the adjustments properly the feedback needs to be given to both the parties it needs to be given to the individuals for continuous improvement and at the second level the feedback may be provided or feedback may be gathered from the participants also so participants also need to give the feedback about how the training went were they able to understand something or not what was the uh, content delivered how was the content delivered were they satisfied with the training or not so that the organization may think on the lines of further improvement and there has to be some kind of scope for improvement in future also whereas on the other hand the training uh, feedback needs to be taken and needs to be given to the employees as well so that they have a clear idea of what they are lacking in where do they need to improve so there has to be a clear assessment so that they are able to understand things in a better manner so these are the various steps involved in the process of training there are different models which can be referred to for example we have systematic process model of training we have uh, instructional method of training so we have different methods of training that can be referred to with respect to the training uh, mechanisms or the various steps involved in the process of training now uh, now that we have we are through with uh, the steps involved in the process of training let's move towards the methods of training so there is human lot of significance because the method you employ would hold a lot of importance in making your employees trained so there are various methods of training each of the method that we are going to discuss here they all have their own advantages they have their own disadvantages and uh, definitely the training method would be purely chosen based on the learning objectives that we have said in the beginning itself so after identifying the training needs which is a very very critical step towards developing a training program after understanding the needs of people at different levels we will proceed towards understanding the objectives so the training objectives have to be made clear in the beginning itself and if we have made the training objectives very clear it gets easy for us to further think on the lines of the other aspects now what are the various methods of training the very first method of training or uh, there are 
com these are commonly used methods in organizations these days and we'll talk about them so on the job method of training is a method which involves learning by doing so the trainees acquires the you know skills knowledge while working alongside the experienced partners so the knowledge skills competence level of the individuals can be obtained while working on the job so it's particularly useful for the roles where some kind of practical uh, skills are essential like manufacturing and uh, you know skilled trades such kind of training may be highly beneficial in those cases now the other aspect or say the next method of training can be classroom training method now when we talk about classroom training method it's a training method in which uh, it is something very much similar to a traditional classroom settings an instructor teaches the material to the people people take notes for it or in fact uh, if they are interested they can take notes otherwise you know they can just retain it and uh, towards the end of it they may be assessed based on whatever they have learned so far so this method is effective for conveying the theoretical knowledge usually when the theoretical knowledge is to be conveyed to the people and uh, when people are to be trained on some aspect which is very purely theoretical in nature some technical concepts are to be ta taught 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 to them in a theoretical manner we may use classroom training method this is again this is a very very traditional method of training the next is e learning now when we talk about e learning it's kind of online training platforms these days we have n number of uh, training platforms available like for example uh, or e learning mechanisms are there npt el is offering a lot of courses swayam prabha is there then we have n number of such you know platforms which are offering n number of courses to the people to hone their skills to develop their competencies to you know enhance their knowledge base so e learning can happen in various forms it may take uh, synchronous form it may take asynchronous form by saying synchronous form we mean that the uh, people are uh, taught something uh live whereas asynchronous is something in which an individual is can do everything at a self paced speed so this is about e learning and these kinds of digital platforms which are there are gaining momentum so definitely they can work at their own pace and uh, very much suitable for remote setting in fact after covid many of the people have started using e learning platforms to hone their skills then is simulations so simulations recreate the real life scenarios what are simulations they are like they are like creating a real life scenario in a very controlled environment so especially they are valuable for those trainings which are highly cost intensive in nature and also they are uh, good for training people in a very high uh, high risky or say very uh, costly situations right so simulations may be created for them first people are made to perform something on simulations and then they can be ready for uh taking up the similar kind of challenges in the real life situations also so it's an excellent way of training the individuals by actively involving the people so there's a lot of active involvement which happens in simulation another method of training is about mentoring and coaching so in this method a lex experienced individual is paired with a highly experienced individuals or say a more experienced individual so this individual works as a mentor the one who is uh, high uh, who possesses high experience is considered as a mentor and the person who possesses less experience is considered as a mentee so this mentor actually mentors the mentee alongside it there is new concept which is gaining momentum these days it's called as friendorship 
Now, I am sure you must be amazed to learn about this particular term. This is relatively a new term, which means an, in an organization, the, the employee needs a friend, a mentor and a leader. So, this kind of concept is evolving these days, wherein the employer might act as a mentor, as a leader and as a friend also, so that all the problems can be hand, handled in a very smooth manner and we do not face any kind of difficulties in it. So, this is about mentoring and coaching the individuals and it is definitely very effective for professional and skill development. Now, the next method of training is workshops and seminars. They are more of interactive sessions, where participants engage in hands on activities and discussions. And uh, since it is a culmination of hand on activity and discussions, so definitely people can reap many more benefits from workshops and seminars that happen. So, definitely these kinds of skills are very helpful, can be proved to, can prove to be very helpful for skill building of employees and also for knowledge transfer of employees. Next is a method called as role playing. So, what is this role playing? Role playing basically involves the participants taking on specific roles and acting out the scenarios. For example, in order to give them the feel of the real life situation, we may give them some situation to handle and we may ask them to play the role of a specific member assuming that particular scenario. So, I would like to uh, tell you about an example of role play. So, there was this organization which was facing a lot of issues related to declining productivity of the people. So, it thought of doing something for their employees, but before doing something they thought of conducting some kind of analysis as to why is this problem happening. So, they figured out that the employees are not very well motivated to be there in on their seats for long they are clocking in a little late, the absenteeism rate is also very high. So, the supervisor thought of taking the cognizance of such situation and decides that he would be issuing a notice to all and he says in his order that after you clock in, you are supposed to be on your seats directly, you will not get any kind of coffee break in between you will not get any kind of lunch break in between, I mean definitely there has to be a designated time in which you will be going for your coffee break and lunch break. So, he said all these things in a very derogatory manner. So, such kind of tone was not liked by people, it did not, it was not liked by people and people sh started showing the resistance, they showing, they started showing some kind of relux reluctance towards work. So, such kind of situation may be given to the people and they may be asked to assume the role of a manager or a supervisor and some of the people may be given the uh, responsibility to assume the role of those employees who are uh, really uh, kind of aggrieved and then they may be given a question to address which may be to figure out some kind of communication strategies to say the same thing in a different manner to the employees. So, such kind of situations may be given to the people, wherein they assume the role of a certain player in the organization and thereafter they try to understand the situation, analyze the situation and act upon it. So, it is a good way of developing the critical thinking skills of the people, the interpersonal skills of the individuals as well and definitely it enhances their cognitive skills also. After that one of the common methods is what you call as lecture method also, which is more of a one way communication, 
but then in certain situations uh, where an expert imparts knowledge to the audience this particular method can be an amazing way to train their employees next method is uh, apprenticeship method they are long term training methods or training programs that combine on the job with classroom instructions so they are common in uh, skilled trades and professions then we have something called as cross training which involves training individuals in various aspects of their jobs so that they get better exposure of taking up the other challenges also to train uh, them so well that they become competent enough to take up the other roles and challenges as well so definitely this method of training is very much effective it's more engaging and it's more fun while promoting the learning then yet another method of training can be gamification which is gaining momentum these days so applying game elements like competition rewards challenges to training make it more engaging and uh, more fun while promoting the learning at the workplace so certainly gamification can be a very good method and interesting method to keep people at work to retain people at work to engage people at work and also to train people at work so such kind of uh, environment can not only help towards fostering a culture of creativity in the organization uh, enhances the bond bonding among the individuals in the organization enhances uh, the group linkages within the organization but also can be highly instrumental for shaping the success of the organization and those organizations who are following the right blend of training methods and honing the skills of their employees well they are able to sustain in the long run with this we come to the strategies for effective training so now we're going to discuss some of the strategies for effective training so when the training is to be imparted to the people it needs to be according to the needs of each and every individual so tailoring the training programs to individual needs is one of the most important strategy that needs to be follows followed and we need to make sure that one size fits all approach may not be effective especially when it comes to training so customization is a crucial aspect of it then it's about utilizing a variety of learning method so instead of just focusing on one method we may make use of blend of methods incorporating diverse approaches towards training such as visual auditory kinesthetics and interactive kind of methods so we have different frameworks for ensuring uh, the uh, learning among the individuals and we may use them for example visual auditory kinesthetics etc so all these things have to be seen and taken care of for example uh, in an in a service in a customer service organization you know instead of relying solely on lectures if we are engaging people on more of role plays presentation multimedia presentations and uh, you know if you are making use of different methods like uh, activity based methods can really help so visual learners benefit from charts and diagrams kinesthetic learners learn from more of hands on activities auditory learners more learn more from discussion but there is no one such method which you know which can be applicable to all and uh, we have to ensure that different methods can be made use of to make our teaching learning more effective and training more effective rather so then we move to encouraging continuous learning so continuously learning involves fostering a culture where employees are motivated enough and they are supported to acquire knowledge and skills beyond initial training this strategy recognizes that learning is a ongoing process so it doesn't stop you have to continuously work towards making your learners learn so this encourages individuals to stay updated with the technology and definitely they are able to keep up with the uh, industry trends and the best practices also so encouraging the continuous learning is one of the important things let's take an example of a professional dev development program which needs to be implemented providing the employees with access to online courses workshops 
and uh, conferences related to the field. Now, encouraging the employees to set aside time for self-directed learning and self-paced learning and recognizing and rewarding those who proactively seek opportunities for continuous learning can really help in this regard. So, this approach will ensure that employees remain adaptable and skilled in a certain kind of environment. So, this way we can you know foster a culture full of learning in the organization. After that we have providing opportunity for practice and feedback. So, learning is to be reinforced, change does not happen merely by training the people. We need to provide them opportunity to practice and give them appropriate kind of feedback also. So, reinforcement is the key here, people need to be reinforced. When usually it is seen that when people are trained on certain aspects, they learn it there and they are very enthusiastic about utilizing those methods. But once they assume their work in the actual workplaces, they switch to the previous practices. It is because of the reason that they are not reinforced. So, the element of reinforcement comes into play, the learning becomes more effective, the training would become more effective if we understand the importance of reinforcement. So, they need to be reinforced and they need to be taught uh, you know they need to be uh, you know kind of motivated and encouraged to take up the same task again so that they feel like working on the same methods otherwise they are more comfortable with the previous methods and they normally do not feel like switching to the new methods of work so for example in a sales training program after covering effective communication techniques participants could engaged in could be engaged in some kind of role playing exercises where they simulate the customer interactions and they can uh, really put the communication styles learn, active learning, le active listening skills learnt during the program, objection handling learned during the program into the real life scenario. So, these strategies can collectively create a comprehensive and a very, very effective kind of training program that you know that uh, addresses the diverse needs and preferences of the participants. So, this is about strategies for effective training. Now, we move to evaluating the training effectiveness. Evaluating the training effectiveness same, uh, you know, assumes the same value and uh, has the same importance as that of delivering the training to the program. So, assessing what people have learned during the pro program and whether they have been able to learn what was supposed to be learned or not is an important task to be addressed, it is an important need to be addressed. So, evaluating the training effectiveness is a very important step in the entire process of training. So, it is about assessing the employee performance using the right methods, maybe we make use of formative methods, we make use of summative methods of assessments. Then employee feedback is an important concern surveys may be generated and may be uh, taken in order to see that whether the training program which was delivered was really effective in its real sense or not. Then at times we even try to figure out the importance or we try to evaluate the training effectiveness in terms of the ROI and cost effectiveness that whether the training which was impo uh, imparted to the people actually impacted in generating the business or not did it bring in some kind of return on investment or not because a lot of money goes into training. So, yet another method of it is in the form of post training evaluation. So, when we talk about post training evaluation it has to go on and we need to really see that whether training was you know uh, training uh, made people gain some thoughtful insights into the actual model or not. Now, uh, there are different methods and there are, I will just brief you on certain methods which can be used for the training effectiveness evaluation. We have something called a CIPP framework and then we have a method called a CIRO method which can be used and these methods can really help in understanding the entire concept better. There is a model called a CIRO model and there is a method, co method called as uh, uh, 
there is a method called as CIRO method which can be uh, really instrumental in uh, understanding the effectiveness of training and there can be yet another method called as Kirk Patrix. There is another method called as Kirk Patrix model of training evaluation. It is a very widely used method for uh, evaluating the training effectiveness. It was developed by Donald L. Kirk Patrick, wherein he assesses the training at different levels by understanding the reaction of people, how participants feel about the training, then about learning what have people learned over a period of time, uh, measures the extent to which people acquired knowledge, skills, etc., which can be observed by making use of some kind of uh, quizzes, skill assessment tests for the people, observations, etc. Then the third stage in Kirk Patrick model talked about behavioral change that can be the you know offshoot of uh, the training, wherein we can uh, sense the behavioral changes by employing the supervisors, the job support mentors, etc. And uh, the last level is what you call as result method. So, we just see that whether it has actually brought about some kind of impact on organizational goal or not. So, there can be different methods which can be used for the same. Some of them are CIRO framework, then we have Kirk Patrick's model, then we have CIPP framework. So, these are the various frameworks which can be used for the uh, you know training effectiveness evaluation. Now, we move to some of the activities that may be taken up with respect to employee development. Uh, as I told you in the beginning itself, the training and development are two different aspects. When we talk about training, it is more of job oriented in nature, whereas when we talk about uh, development, it is more of you know career oriented in nature. So, in context of development, there can be various activities which may be taken up by the organization. Like for example, we may have the leadership development programs, specially meant for cultivating leadership skills among the employees. Then we may have career development workshops, so that people are able to see how their car career management uh, or career uh, path would look like. And if they have a clear picture of how their career path would look like, they are able to get a broader picture of it and they are able to better implement the things. Then we may have some kind of professional development courses for the people, so that uh, they are able to hone their capabilities, their uh, you know their skills, their capacities, their competencies, the knowledge waves, etc. Then we may have some kind of mentoring and coaching initiatives for the people. Even friendorship can be a very good idea to develop the individuals to a large extent. And then we may have some kind of educational opportunities for people to develop their capabilities. So. Definitely such kind of things can also be highly instrumental in shaping the organization's success and educational opportunities can contribute tremendously towards uh, you know towards acquiring the advanced skills and you know qualification for career progression and definitely uh, it satisfies their personal growth uh, you know criteria also and therefore they are able to work towards it. And then we have skill diversification programs. Many organizations encourage the individuals to develop, uh, you know, develop and prepare for better roles, to develop a broader set of skills that may be applicable to various roles within the organization. So, skill diversification programs can also be a wonderful idea to work on. Then we have something called as succession planning activities. Uh, when you talk about succession planning activity, it is about identifying and preparing the individuals for key roles within the organization, ensuring a smooth transition when the positions become vacant. So, especially for the top leadership position, such kind of things are there. And then we have cross training initiatives for people, wherein uh, they are provided opportunities for gaining the experience in different areas of organizations fostering more of versatility and adaptability. So, these are broadly the things that are uh, essentially a part of your employee development 
activities. So, I would quickly try to conclude whatever we have learned it to today's session. So, the session was all about training and development. I am sure by now you would have a fair understanding of the uh, training and development. What does training and development really mean? What are the various steps involved in training and development? What can be the various methods which can be employed for training and development? And uh, what, what strategies can be put in place for ensuring the effective training mechanism in the organization? And then of course, what can be the various methods for delivering the training, evaluating the training? We talked about several aspects related to CIPP model, CIRO model, Kirkpatrix model, various methods of evaluating the training needs of people and also some of the employee development activities that can be taken up by the organizations for honing the skills and capability of the individuals from their career point of view was also being talked about. With this we come to the end of today's lecture. Thank you so much.